welcome back we have been discussing colloidal stability and uh, we are nearly done with it uh, i will just uh, highlight two specific cases i mean there is with this colloidal stability in fact certain flow is associated and uh, before i move on to the topic of this particular lecture that is the self assembly of surfactant molecules uh, i'll just like to highlight that so now uh, it's a good recapitulation for all of you so you have two colloids of same material one in a liquid 3 and let us say that delta G 1 3 1 is negative. So, this means that uh, the colloids are going to adhere, it is not going to be a stable colloid which is fair enough and now you know that this is possible either you have both the colloids of the liquids are polar or even one of them is polar. Uh, you can also have this under a very uh, special case of a uh, yeah these are the two um, conditions uh, yeah also under a very special case of monopolar liquid and monopolar uh, colloids where both, both either both the positive components or both the negative components are zero but what is important as as the two colloids come in contact with each other they actually squeeze out the liquid from the intermediate zone or the liquid that is between these two and this triggers a flow and this is known as hydrophobic repulsion. Okay. On the other hand, if you have uh, why it is called hydrophobic repulsion, probably you can start thinking because uh, two surfaces. So, we have already learnt about what is hydrophobicity, what is hydrophilicity. Uh, two surfaces will adhere. Uh, in water particularly if this liquid is water then it is called hydrophobic repulsion. Water of course, is a polar liquid. So, uh, this is possible only when the colloids are apolar and apolar colloids will have rather low surface energies. So, the surfaces corresponding to them are going to be hydrophobic. They do not want water to spread on them. So, essentially what they would like is they would like to cover themselves up with each other and squeeze away the water from them. So, it is a very interesting case study. Uh, so, that is why it is called the hydrophobic repulsion. If on the other hand the liquid is water and the colloids are stable. So, now you know that uh, this is possible when this uh, delta G 1 3 1 is positive. Uh, this in fact leads to uh, an outward motion of the two colloids because they are stable they want to go away from each other even if you forcibly bring them together they would like to go away from each other. So, what does that trigger that in fact triggers an inward flow of water or the liquid and this is known as hydration pressure. So, this I thought that I will just tell you because all of you have done some course or the other on fluid dynamics and you see here based on the surface interactions in fact, uh, there are some flow that gets triggered. So, uh, I mentioned that in the classical form of the Navier Stokes equation you rarely talk about the uh, surface energy term, but here you see examples where flow is uh, triggered due to surface effects. The other thing I just wanted to highlight, we now all understand what is delta G 1 3 for example it is something like uh, please do not confuse it with uh, these examples of 1 3 1 it is 1 3. So, very simple uh, two surfaces 1 and 3 initially in air or vacuum coming in contact that is it and one of the way you can write it down is the final configuration that is the g f minus g i, but if you look back into the derivation that you have done, if you look back into the derivation you have done, uh, you also now know this delta g 1 3 has different components. Uh, which are primarily delta G 1 3 L W and delta G 1 3 A B and the individual components have these expressions. 
Okay. So, you want to if you would like to write the full expression of delta G 1 3 for a system where polar interactions are present, this is what you will get. Okay. Now, with this I will the reason why I wrote it is I will revisit the Young's equation. at this time. So, this is very well known now. And you have gamma s is equal to gamma s l plus gamma l cos theta e. Uh, this gamma s l we now just pick up this gamma s l and we can write it down get an expression following this particular expression we just discussed. I mean we can write an expression like delta g s l is equal to gamma s l minus gamma s plus gamma l. Uh, it is s situation what you can think that you had the pristine surface and you had the liquid somewhere and you simply bring them in contact. So, that is what is delta g s l. So, if you substitute, so one can get an expression for gamma s l in terms of delta g as delta g s l plus gamma s plus gamma l and this you can if you substitute here what you get is gamma s is equal to delta g s l plus gamma s plus gamma l plus gamma l cos theta e. Uh, this in fact cancels out and even if it uh, cancels out what you get is gamma l cos theta e plus 1 is equal to minus delta g s l. Uh, you can in fact, take help of this equation now and simply substitute the expression of delta g s l, which will give you uh, gamma l cos theta e plus 1 is equal to 2. Uh, this is now a very important expression. Uh, by the way, uh, this particular form of Young's equation is known as the Young Darpe equation. Even if you forget the names, uh, I do not care about the pedagogic details, but uh, you can write the Young's equation. This is nothing but the Young's equation written in this particular form. Uh, but this particular equation is very important because with this equation, in principle, you can calculate the surface energy. I repeat surface energy of a solid using three liquids, why three is will be clear to you, three liquids of known surface energy. How does it work? You have a instrument available with us, which is known as the contact angle goniometer.
I'll just write it here. Where you can actually take a surface, a solid surface, and dispense a drop of any liquid, and you can measure the theta u. This is measurable. It is computer programmed, you have a camera, so you can measure it. Most people, in fact, what they do is that they put a drop of water on a solid surface, and based on that, looking at the equilibrium contact angle, they straight away comment whether the surface is hydrophobic or hydrophilic based on the convention of what is the equilibrium contact angle. But there is more to that. So, if you take a solid surface, its surface energy is gamma s and it is a function of gamma s L w, gamma s plus and gamma s minus. right? So, if you can independently determine all these three parameters, there is no reason why you cannot calculate gamma s. So, what is typically done? You take three liquids, remember simultaneous algebraic equations, three unknowns. So, therefore, you need three equations. So, you get three liquids, they make three different contact angle. So, all the liquids will have So, these nine set of values needs to be known. If you know them, you can you get the theta e for liquid 1, liquid 2, liquid 3. These are known for that particular liquid. So, you get three simultaneous equations and which you can solve a simple three algebraic simultaneous equations. You can solve and you can get the three components and therefore, you can uh, find out the uh, surface energy of an unknown solid sample. Well, this is very, very effective. Uh, there is a limitation of course, of this technique and can you think, is there a limitation in the value of gamma s you can determine using the goniometer. Well, uh, if the one of the mandatory requirements is that all the three liquids must make a finite equilibrium contact angle, because you need the values of theta e 1, theta e 2 and theta e 3. Therefore, if one of the liquids, if any liquid fully weights the substrate, it is like this complete weighting, then you cannot use it. And under what condition uh, the liquid will start to fully wet the surface? Uh, the condition is if the surface energy of the solid is much higher than that of the liquid, there is a possibility that the contact angle will become very less and eventually will start to fully wet. So, one of the one can impose a restriction by saying that the value of gamma s, this is important, listen to it carefully, maybe we can have a discussion or in the discussion forum I will comment on this. The value of gamma s that you can measure is limited by the maximum value of gamma L of the three probing liquids. Uh, if you are, there are due, due to pinning and other conditions, even a uh, liquid on a higher energy surface might exhibit a finite contact angle, but if you know that your uh, the surface energy that you are going to calculate is lower than the uh, surface energy of the uh, liquids and you, you are guaranteed to have equilibrium contact angle, 
then your method works fine. Of course, the maximum value why? Because uh, out of the three liquids, one will have the maximum value, the others will anyway have uh, lower values. So, that is not going to be a, a problem and that is the maximum what you can measure. Think over it, this is an interesting aspect. Now, I will quickly give you a very nice uh, example of uh, this so called surfactant self assembly, uh, which is entirely related to hydrophobic and hydrophilic interaction. Uh, what is a surfactant molecules? I do not want to go into the detailed chemistry of it. Uh, name suggest it all, they are surface active molecules, but these are unique molecules which have specially varying domains uh, of hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. Typically, this is how a surfactant molecule looks like. You have a inorganic head, and an organic tail. This organic tail is uh, mostly hydrocarbon. So, this is the hydrophobic part. and this is the hydrophilic part. So, now you know that uh, hydrophilic uh, part will like water, hydrophobic part will not like water etcetera. So, if you now take a container of water and let us say you put in one hydro, one surfactant molecule into it. Of course, there are classification, there are four type of surfactants which are uh, classified not very important for our context. Uh, they are known as cationic surfactant, anionic surfactant, just check it out in the net, you will get all the details. Non ionic surfactant, if, uh, depends on the nature of the head group. So, if the head group contains a positive charge or cation, it is a cationic surfactant, head group contains anionic uh, group, it is an anionic surfactant. Uh, head group may not contain any charge, it is a non ionic surfactant or if the head group contains both the charges that is also possible, it is known as a zwitter ionic surfactant. Just check out, but what is interesting for our case is that if you have water and put one surfactant molecule, what happens is this part the hydrophilic head likes to be in contact with water. However, the hydrophobic tail does not want to be in contact with water. So, uh, how do you satisfy both of them? This is a small molecule, this is water, so the molecule can move depending on because you have seen because of hydration pressure and hydrophobic repulsion colloidal particles can move, they are not affected by gravity. So, what will happen is this molecule will migrate to the free surface and take a configuration like this. This way what happens, you see the hydrophilic head group is in contact with water, so it is satisfied and the hydrophobic tail is away from water. So, that is also satisfied, it is not coming in contact with the atom. So, of course, in, in real experiments you do not you do not have the ability of adding one surfactant at a time. So, you add lot of surfactant, you add some surfactant molecules and their first preferred location is going to be the free surface. So, they are going to migrate here, fine. What happens if you add excess amount of surfactant molecules? excess in the sense that the free surface is fully covered and you still have some surfactant molecules, because they do not have now the space to migrate to the free surface. So, they are forced to stay inside the uh, liquid. So, what happens is under this circumstances, if the free surface is fully covered, So, see for each of the molecules, the hydrophobic tail is actually leading to significant amount of energy penalty or the see interfacial energy is rather high, they do not want to uh, stay like that. So, what happens is these molecules 
sort of come together and form a spherical cluster like this. Many of you might be might have started to guess it. Yes, this is what is known as the micelle formation. So, what is a micelle? You you have it is a self assembly firstly they organize by themselves. So, it is a self assembly process, it is an assembly of the surfactant molecules in such a way in a spherical dome like fashion. So, that the outside surface, so the, so the head groups are facing outward. So, now this sort of becomes what is known as a supra molecular assembly, it is not a single molecule, it is an ensemble of molecules, but water as a whole sees only the hydrophilic head groups that is what is surrounding the outside and all the uh, hydrophobic tails which uh, sort of uh, do not have a preferred interaction towards uh, affinity towards water are sort of hidden beneath these uh, hydrophilic heads. So, this is what is known as the micelle formation. Uh, if you remember uh, while we were talking about the examples of different paradigms of nanofabrication, the second example I gave was of self assembly and this is one of the classic examples of self assembly, because the molecules assemble by themselves, because you do not have any mechanism to individually hold the molecules and assemble them and they assemble in a desired fashion. Huh? Here what is the uh, um, motivation for the formation of this type of an assembly? The motivation is in fact, to reduce the uh, interfacial energy penalty. So, it forms and to water it is like a spherical ball which has hydrophilic head and all the hydrophobic tails are sort of hidden uh, uh, below or behind these hydrophilic head groups. Few more examples or uh, thought provoking questions one can ask. So, uh, the more classical one many of you probably know what is CMC critical micelle concentration. Of course, you need a certain concentration for the micelle to form, because if the concentration of the micelle uh, if the of the surfactant uh, molecules is very very less than the micelle will not form, because as long as the free surface is free the molecules will migrate there. Uh, even when the free surface is full and you have two less number of molecules which are not enough to form a micelle and cover all the tails nothing no assembly will uh, take place. That also sort of uh, gives you a feeling that if you now take for the same system two containers which are let us say like this what it means is that one is deep and shallow the water volume is same, uh, but the geometry is different. Uh, are you going to get uh, different values of CMC? And my uh, answer based on uh, fundamentals would be uh, yes, I am not very sure if you can uh, physically measure the difference using any instrument, but uh, you see this because of the geometry of the vessel, this uh, particular vessel is going to accommodate less number of uh, uh, surfactant molecules at the free surface. So, therefore, it will uh, favor micelle formation. Uh, or favor early micelle formation as compared to this one. This has higher surface area and therefore, uh, it can accommodate larger number of uh, surfactant molecules. One can also start thinking about uh, does the material of construction favor or affect uh, the value of CMC. Again, I am not very sure because I am not a chemist uh, uh, what can be what is the accuracy with which you can measure CMC, but uh, in principle if you if you take two uh, containers of the same volume and one is let us say made of a let us say some plastic like perspex which is PMMA nothing else and one is let us say made of glass. Now, glass is hydrophilic in fact uh, and uh, this is hydrophobic. So, when you add water there is water therefore, the surface is in contact with water, but here the surface likes the water here it does not like the water. So, uh, 
when you add surfactant molecules of course, the first and the most uh, preferred location for the surfactant molecules to go here is to the free interface, but I would expect that in this particular case uh, surfactant molecules would prefer to adhere to the surface. They will sort of act as uh, hiding the hydrophobic wall container of the wall from water and then only micelle formation will start. In, uh, in this case the free surface gets filled up and then straight away micelle formation starts. Uh, another important uh, term uh, you might have come across is a reverse micelle, which is a, a very, very common uh, technique for synthesis of nanoparticles. Uh, reverse micelles are almost no, uh, always are sort of known as nano reactors. All you do is instead of water, you take an organic solvent. where the tails actually like and the head does not like, because the head is hydrophilic. So, initially the interface gets populated like this and once the interface is filled up, again there is a micelle like assembly, but the assembly is exactly in the opposite orientation. Now, the tails are facing out and the heads are sort of hidden. So, this is uh, sort of a reverse micelle. The interesting thing is there is a lot of literature on that and I do not want to uh, talk about micelle and reverse micelle in this course, this is not the right course for that, but uh, after today's discussion you can uh, sort of look for yourself. But interesting thing is unlike a micelle where the core is filled up, the here the core is sort of hollow and that is why uh, this has sort of become a very, very popular uh, technique for uh, synthesis of nanoparticles. You can have the, the reactants as a dispersion and the micelles can form or the reverse micelle can form uh, around uh, the aqueous or uh, what type of reactants you take and then uh, you can have some reaction which triggers uh, formation of uh, your nanoparticles. So, uh, I will stop here uh, and uh, next class we will have a quick discussion on another aspect of surface tension that is the Laplace pressure and I will try to do a quick recapitulation of whatever we have done so far and then we will move on to nano patterning. Thank you.